So call the meeting, I'm calling the meeting to order. Uh, first thing is set adjust agenda. Does anybody want to take anything off the agenda? I need to add an item. Ugh. It's a quick one. Um, add an item number seven, select board to consider approving three cannabis license renewals. So these were approved last year, but they have to just get renewed every year, similar to liquor and tobacco. So there's three. And I put, it, I put them, yep, I put them on your on the table there. Too bad. Yeah, it's just a quick one. I moved it. Oh, anything else? That's it. That's all I had. To uh, accept the uh, amended agenda. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Need one. Motion carries. That's everyone. So we have the agenda with the added item seven. Um, all right, first thing, communication from the audience. Anybody here to communicate anything that's not on the agenda? Yes, sir, please state your name. Uh, I am Eric Jonathan. Hi. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm here to give the town officials a civil order. Just notice you guys have a civil order. Just to familiarize yourself with some of the dual capacities of our current government society. I've got one. You got one. Save the paper. I've got one too. You got one? Yeah. Okay. You were in, I was in the office in the right. game. Is anybody else in the office small one? Well, I don't know what it is. Wrong name. I'll read these one. Huh? No, you can't. Yes. I'll have a go. Here you go. Don't worry about it. Basically, it's addressing the, the problem of um, the power that's concentrated in the commercial system of the U.S. government and all of the states and municipalities that come down from that in terms of using the issued currency and how this is not beneficial to the human beings, which um, government and all of the constitutions of the states in America is set up to um, protect the natural rights of us as human beings. <clears throat> so this is um, an order to stop participating in commerce that does not benefit the life force of human beings and to reorganize ourselves in a way that we are satisfying the original intent of governments and constitutions in America and in Vermont. Okay. So I'm acting as a civil authority, one of the people, as is my duty under the United States Constitution. Okay. So we will give it a read. Thank you. Okay. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to support you in moving forward with any corporate entities that wish to try to engage with you in commerce going forward. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else here for something not on the agenda or have something they want to communicate to us that's not we're not going to discuss later? All right. Sounds good. Moving along. Uh, next up is town manager report given by David Ups. Minutes. Minutes. Next up, we're going to approve. Don't we're try gonna, to jump ahead here. Sorry. We're going to consider approving. We're going to the, approve the minutes of December 7th, 2023, Select Board Breaker Select Board Second. Um, I had I had one minor change, but you already made it, right? Yeah. Great. Uh, Perfect. All right. All in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, okay. So now, town manager report given by David Upson Jr. Okay. Um, so we've been meeting with the SE group for the bridge and the park work. Um, we will be needing more funding for the Daniels block side of the park. So we're slowing down. We have a conceptual drawing for the park. Um, we're slowing down on further development of that side. And um, our community development coordinator is actively looking for grants for several town projects. And this has been included in the list. Okay. Okay. Can I ask a question? But that yeah. doesn't, that's not slowing down the bridge itself. Not that's that, my question. That's accelerating, that's going to. Activating the bridge. 
<coughs> it's going to accelerate the bridge. So we're focusing on the bridge. Yes. Got it. And the main street side, because that all kind of needs to happen in one right. Right. One, um, one go. swing. Yep. And then the FEMA work, we're trying to coordinate with the, the retaining wall. So we're trying to coordinate that work with the park work and the bridge. Great. It's become real a real simple project. Nice. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to just peel up more layers. So this is a, an addition to um, this is a, a further um, discussing the police department. So we are actively advertising for a police chief. Um, we have advertised in several local newspapers, a national website, and municipal support organizations similar to VLCT in New Hampshire, Maine, and New York. The posting will be active until January 15th. We are also advertising for patrol positions as well. Staffing is and will continue to be an issue for 24-hour coverage. The chief and our current staff continue to work hard to continue the 24-hour coverage, so please thank them for their dedication to the mission. Um, Mike is, is staying with us, but we have an exit strategy. I'm developing an exit strategy for him. Um, he's going to help us find a new chief and uh, get you know, hopefully fully staffed and, and moving forward in a positive direction like we are now. Can I make it? <coughs> yes. So I just want to say on, on behalf of the select board, we really very much appreciate Mike coming in yeah. and helping us with the PD. And I think we fully understand that Mike had retired mm -hmm. from a full career yeah. at, with the Vermont State Police. Yeah. He came here to help us and really appreciate that. and. Um, yeah, and understand that he needs to help us make this next transition. Yes. Um, December, uh, oh, I want to discuss the opening and closing of the emergency shelter and the post flood follow up on Tuesday. This is the most recent flooding event. Um, so I opened this shelter uh, at the advice of the police chief at 4 o'clock on Monday. Uh, no one showed up at the shelter, which is good. Uh, we were able to staff it and man it until 10 p.m. Um, and that transit, that uh, handoff from the school to our volunteers went well. Um, and then the next morning, we were able to field phone calls. We reached out to several folks um, using the list that we had from the flood, the, the July flood, and we were able to help um, go right to the problems and help um, address the the base the flooded basements, and um, I think that worked well. We worked with the neighbor to neighbor group with um, with phone calls and receiving requests for help, and then um, the civic standard was on standby for volunteers, um, and we were able to use supplies, pumps, and dehumidifiers that we purchased and had uh, donated to us for um, to get that out to people that were affected by the flooding. So we're going to just hone our skills on that one. Let's um, hope we don't have to hone it over too many seconds. <laughs> but but it's, it's good. It's, uh, it worked well, so I'm, I'm happy with that. That's great. So a special thanks to all those involved. Um, I, I got, I'm going to end with two good news. Uh, so the EPA Region 1 Boston Wastewater Treatment Facility Operator of the Year was awarded to our uh, wastewater treatment plant operator Ken LaCasse. Ken will be presented with this award on Wednesday, January 24th at the New England Water Environment Association Awards Banquet in Boston, Mass. So congratulations to Ken. Um, and our Jeez. generator... We're going to ever go to hear the end of that. Yep. <laughs> Good work, Ken. Good work, Ken. Generator is running again at the wastewater treatment facility. This will eventually be replaced, but due to the current supply chain and ongoing flood recovery work, um, we needed a standby generator. And a local mechanic from a local business who has experience with CAT equipment tackled this project and was su successful. Special thanks to Chad Trudeau and Gate Salvage for deviating from their normal operations to help out the town. That's very nice. That's, yeah. that's huge. So, can you explain though why, so we need we need, gen why we need that? So we had two power outages. They were brief, which was good. Yeah. But um, we have a very short window with high flows um, to not discharge raw sewage into the river. Yeah. So we need backup power at the plant. 
Have we never had backup? No, we have backup power. It's just that it flooded. The generator right? flooded. Got it. And we don't have that generator back. Yeah, it's running again. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. So. It wasn't there. It was back. It wasn't running. So we. Oh, we got it. it was, it's in the building. Oh, really? Yeah. But they got it going. We got it going. Awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, a new generator was like a year and a half out. So. And very expensive. And very expensive. Yes. So this was a cost effective approach. Nice. And using local resources. That's awesome that we yes. have people who could, who could help. Yep. Yeah. That's my manager's report. Great. Questions for Mr. Upson? Um, all right, next up, Tom, is the road foreman report. Tom. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought we fared fairly well from the re recent rain. Uh, we got quite a few roads there that uh, had minor damages on it and stuff. Uh, we got those all just about all fixed back up. Uh, the next few days in weather permitting next week, uh, hopefully, uh, we're trying to get rid of all the ruts and stuff now on the road. So we've been up to Kenny's bed there, hauling some material out of there uh, to try to buff them out. Um, Kenny's bed, that's now our pit? Yes, that's our pit. We're still going <laughs> to call it Kenny's bed. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the other thing we went through our mud season material really quick. But we Lucky we some, had it. Yes, and we hauled some material back because Danville Pit was only going to be open this week and that, and that was it. Uh, so we got that stockpile back up over there. Then by this afternoon, we, we jumped back onto the roads again, uh, started doing some more on those, and tomorrow we we'll continue, and then weather permitting next week if we don't get any huge snow. Uh, I don't know whether we'll get them all done or not because of the weather, but that's, that's the plan. How are the trucks? So far, so good. <laughs> you just jinxed them, so they'll all break down tomorrow. So. <laughs> Sorry, Todd. <laughs> Carry Road withstood all the detour traffic? Yes, it did. We had one of our folks on that. I think it was that night of the rain, I think. The embutment on the side, on Macco's side, was washing. Uh, we managed to get up there and get that plug back up and stuff and get that pack back in so so the cars can continue to go around it and stuff for, because 14 was shut down. So. Great. Yeah. Thanks for your work. Yeah, yeah. Any questions? Moving right along. Next up is Hardwick Electric Department. We have Mike Sullivan here tonight. Welcome. Okay. So I uh, take this opportunity from this venue to raise awareness that the commissioners are starting to evaluate another rate increase, uh, primarily driven by ongoing increased transmission costs. So more to be coming on that uh, in the coming months. The uh, upcoming borrowing that we've been looking at for system upgrades um, and other things, the woke up flooding, powerhouse flooding. Um, we've been looking at options for those with local banks, the bond bank, and just wanted to raise all of your awareness that if we do go to the bond bank, we, that is going to be at your approval. That's that's a fault. Though they do their loans at full faith and credit of the corporation, so you guys will be involved if that's the way we go, which I expect we will because it's by far and away the best deal. So I just put that on your radar. Um, Woke at Hydro, all the generator and turbine components are now down in uh, Connecticut getting repaired and overhauled. These are six and seven ton components. So they aren't easy to dismantle or to get on a truck and get them to Connecticut. So they're down there. And what's left in the powerhouse uh, is not much. It's going to be torn out and replaced with new. So um, the hydraulic pressure unit that controls the wicked gates and the blades, that's actually the power, the water spins to make the power, uh, that thing got submerged, it's all full of silt and sand, so there's no fixing it, so we've got to replace that. It's all hydraulic components and hydraulic seals that I don't even know how you try and clean the thing, so you've got to get a new one. 
some very good news was that the initial steam cleaning, baking, and testing of the stator, uh, which is a 12,000 pound component, uh, came back good. So the stator does not need to be rewound, which is a avoided cost of $200,000 on the project. And we're going to be about a million overall as it is. So that was very good news. Um, let's see. Hats off to our team, the ops guys, the crews. We've had three Mondays in a row of unprecedented wet and heavy snowstorms with thousands of customers out of power that they got down to a couple of hundred within 20 to 22 hours. Uh, and the last hundred or so are always the ones that take forever, so they take a little while longer. But the crew has just been fantastic. Um, H11 is not doing too great. It's about 12% under budget so far this year. Uh, and that coupled with the loss of Woka Hydro are having a, an impact, but we're thankful that market power is very cheap right now. So the impact that it could have been having could have been significant, and what we're actually having is pretty minimal. So happy about that. Um, purchase power costs year to date, we are $45,000 or dollars or 1.3% over budget of 3.4 million. So pretty good. And we have a coverage ratio of 94%. The financials year to date, revenues are $175,000 or 2.8% under budget. Hence some of the rate increase movement. Um, and expenses are $110,000 or 1.8% under budget. So been controlling spending pretty well. And with that, I'll open it up to any questions you may have. Um, can you offer a target date for when Wilka Hydro might be back online? We're hoping uh, March 1st, but probably April 1st. Okay, that's not that far out. Yeah, the, the, uh, the turbine and the runner that went to Ontario is going to take the longest amount of time because it's a 16 foot long, 8 inch diameter stainless steel shaft with a hydraulic system inside it. And they have to basically remachine the whole thing because it was 18 years of life. They're usually about a 25 year life. So as long as we had the whole generator torn off, now's the time to take that out and do it too because it's within five years of needing it. And it's you know sixty-five to seventy-five thousand dollars to tear the unit apart. It's foolish not to do that now. Um, also, you mentioned market power is is uh, low yeah. price right now, which is good. But I know you sometimes have a forecast from Vipsa. Do you have a for Do they have a winter more into the? Winter yeah. Forecast? So they 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 project everything sixty days out on the short purchases. You know, most of our stuff is very long term. But the 60-day uh, forecast, they consider projected temperatures and all the all that stuff. And um, the forecast is even without Wilkett Hydro, our uh, expected damage, basically financial damage, this winter will be minimal. That's so good news. Very lucky. Yeah. Two winters ago, it would have been half a million dollars or more just for January. Right. Anybody else? Anything new happening with the EV charger that's over there? Does it work? The EV charger is, works, but we, and we, so the, the EV charger was put in, and the plan was to have it as a non regulated part of the business. So we didn't, wouldn't have to fight with getting a tariff and being regulated on the whole thing, because it's really a pilot. And uh, as it turned out, that became quite a debacle because we have to keep it on a separate set of books. It would have to be audited differently, uh, uh, separately from everything else. So we've regrouped uh, and I've given a 
preliminary draft of a filing for a tariff to our attorneys, but I have not followed up, had time to follow up with them yet. So, so we're going to get a tariff. But it's not online currently? It's not online. No. Okay. It's all ready to go. It's just we have to get that paper yeah. from the commission. And when it is online, it'll be on the map that tells people that are yep. looking for one. Yep, and it's all plug and play right there. It's all, you know, cashless payment it works it works great. A couple of people used it. Okay. And then I realized they were using it. We you know we didn't really want to get in trouble, so we shut it off. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, item one, town clerk Tanya Chase to uh, present liquor and tobacco licenses. Hello. There you are, hi. Hi, so Tops is doing a renewal for their second class liquor license and their tobacco license. They don't have any issues or objections. Okay, move to approve those. Tops? Yes. Okay. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Uh, next is item two, select board to review notification letter for a proposed farmland conservation project on a portion of the North Heartland Farms land on Terra Planus Place. I provide feedback if they have any, which is just off Marin Lane. Morin. Morin. Something like that. I think it's North Heartland Farms. Yeah, yeah. Is that not what I said? No. You said Heartland. Did I really? Yeah, no, I right next to Heartland. That was like Heartland. Yeah. Oh, I've been reading Channel. the uh, Channeling My Mother or perhaps uh, reading our All Hazard Mitigation Plan too much and finding Heartland all over the geography. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so. Um, did everybody get a chance to look at this? Mm, I did not. I have it here. So it basically says that, that was it not in our thing? So uh, I would summarize it as saying they're working to conserve, is it is some, is it 50 acres? <coughs> I don't remember how many acres it is. Uh, 27. 27? What does it say right there for acres? 52.4 and 52. Yeah, so they're looking to conserve some acreage of timberland and farmland, and there's a letter from the Vermont Land Trust outlining how that, in fact, corresponds with uh, the stated goals in our town plan. And uh, our response, we they, they say that they don't need a response if we're okay with it, and if we're not okay with it, please send them a letter. Uh, and it's not really if we're okay with it, it's more specifically if it doesn't, if we think it doesn't. There's something to we got. We've got a problem. If we've got a problem with zoning somehow, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Which it does. Which it does. So, I don't think we have a problem. Well then, I don't think I see All right. So, I think we can have no action and we're good. Yeah. Unless somebody thinks otherwise. Good job. All right. So next is item three, the Conservation Commission is here to present details of their plan to work with the downtown partnership on tree planting in the village. Oh, well, that's, hello, I'm Rachel Payne, that's very kind of, I'm, uh, I am, um, I'm afraid we are not actually behind the organization that is uh, Tracy Martin and uh, Recorded from the downtown partnership that is, has initiated this application for this grant, which is wonderful. Um, and the Conservation Commission uh, uh, would be very excited to work with the downtown partnership. Um, it's something that we wanted to do in town for years, so it's really great to, uh, uh, you know, if we get a chance to do it, uh, our members are really interested in, in, in helping to facilitate. It. Can you give us a brief overview? Well, Tracy's of, here to do that too. Oh, I think. Okay. I'm just wondering what we're what. What's it? Yeah. What's it? What are we talking about? Let's, let's have Tracy define it. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so this is this as Rachel. So um, as Rachel said, this was in in started by the downtown um, Arctic Downtown Partnership as part of their first five year plan, and then as part of their plan for this coming fiscal year. They have a goal of getting some trees planted in downtown Hardwick, where appropriate. And so we happened upon this grant through, it's through Vermont Forest Parks and Rec, through what they call their Urban and Community Forest Program. Um, and this is a grant, uh, it's called the Urban and Community Forest Grant, um, that for, for this year, and I don't know if it's going to be beyond this year or not, they've had a big in, inflow of federal money. So for the first time that I'm aware of, these grants require no match. And a grant that requires no match is a rare and beautiful thing. So we, it got our attention, and um, we've spoken with the Conservation Commission and with um, Jeff, our, our tree warden, and he's super excited. He couldn't be here tonight to speak on it. But um, the downtown partnership is going to be applying for a grant. It's, it's going to be somewhere in the range of $30,000, $35,000. The goal is to plant 30 trees in the downtown over the course of two years. Um, and this could include, and probably will, we hope it will include, planting some trees along sidewalks and streets in neighborhoods that will technically be on private property. And the net, um, urban and community forest folks have done many, many projects like this with communities. So they have sample agreements that towns have had with residents <coughs> when this is going on. This is the reason we wanted to bring it to you all because the Conservation Commission is going to be a is going to collaborate on this project and they're a town entity and Jeff is the tree warden, he's a town entity and so we just wanted to make sure that you all were aware and felt comfortable with this. Um, that it's a two year project, the first year will be spent um, identifying locations, selecting trees, doing soil testing and a lot of um, public relations work to get people excited about this and then the second year we'll be doing the planting. And the, the funding will mostly go toward hiring a contractor who will, you know, who will, will purchase the trees through that contractor probably and they will do the planting. So this is not like a bunch of volunteers digging holes and stuff like that. We would hire a professional. Um, and then the Conservation Commission and our tree warden would basically keep an eye on those trees for the first year or so. That's what the letter of agreement is about with the um, property owners, and then at, at that time, the property owners kind of take over the care of the trees. So there's a big education component of this, um, uh, teaching people about the benefits of trees and residential communities, and also the care, how you care for trees and, you know, make them live long and be prosperous. <laughs> anyway, so just kind of bringing it to you in case anybody had questions or, you know, just wanted to put it out there that this is something we're looking at. Great. It's due also. It's due also January fifth. So yeah. and went well into the, the weeds with it. Yeah, um, and then trees are also helpful with the water flood mitigation, and we're trying right. to um, identify places where trees have been and they've gone, they've died or whatever, and maybe trying to replace some that were already in other places around town, especially like on Granite Street. Oh, okay. I was wondering where. That was my biggest question, but it sounds like that's identif yeah. that'll be identified at a later date. Well, we're going to open it up for people who are interested in adopting a tree. They have to live within the downtown because this is a project of the downtown commission, but that's a fairly big area that encompasses several residential neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, so people are going to be able to, like, say we'd like to host one of these trees on our property. And then um, Jeff will get with them, conservation commission members who are interested in being involved at that level will get with them and help them find an appropriate spot. The idea is that these are community trees. So this is not gonna be like on their backyard. This is a tree that's gonna be near a sidewalk or you know, that's gonna afford shade to the community and all the other benefits that come with that, including you no. Know, regulating temperature, um, as Sherry said, uh, uh, there's a you know, clean water aspect to this, um, just a water, 
management flood mitigation aspect to it. So it, you know, soil retention because the roots hang onto the soil and help keep from having washouts or kind of thing. So there's all kinds of benefits and um, yeah, I'm lathering now, so I'll be quiet. <laughs> Yeah, I think fortunately in our area, a lot of people appreciate trees. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So it won't be a hard, I don't think it'll be a hard sell. And Jeff can help us identify um, what species of trees are most appropriate. We will be doing soil sampling and also looking at the situation. Like we're not going to um, plant a tree that's going to grow really tall under, you know, <laughs> under electric wires and that kind of thing. And he's got a ton of experience with that and can help us make sure that we're not creating any problems in the, for the future. Funny story. Good idea. But plan them where appropriate. I like that plan. <laughs> South Burlington's building a new main street, basically. And they planted trees <laughs> right next to the street. So they're so narrow that the truck mirrors it. We don't want to be like South Burlington. We don't. No. That's what I'm saying. Put, put them where they're appropriate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they look great. But they're in the road. <laughs> and they're new. So, uh, can I chime in? Sorry, I'm on a uh, solemn way. Kids in the house. Um, and then studies around like salt and runoff and things like that affecting the trees because I've seen, and you know, like Stowe does a really good job watering their trees and putting stuff on their trees daily to keep those things out it'd be a big investment to be wasted if that wasn't taken into consideration we, we run a lot of salt on sidewalks that would just kill the trees instantly right that's why i'm so pleased that jeff is so closely engaged i mean he's very excited and i mean he's he's all about the science of this and um you know being mindful of those things but you're absolutely right that's a, a big issue especially in urban or you know more densely populated places so thank you for bringing this to us, and uh, we look forward to hearing how the grant is received. Cool. Fingers crossed. No match. Woo -hoo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll sign off now. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Bye. Rachel, do you want to? Are you good? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Just checking. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, we hope we hope we get it. It's going to be going to be great. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Um, all right, next is item four, discussion about a uh, placement of Hardwick Rescue Building on Creamery Road. I think we have a sketch up. How far in is that? Not very, got it. And uh, I see some Hardwick Rescue type faces in our Just midst. Just in case anything happens. Yeah, okay, yeah, well, it's probably wise. Yeah, it's on standby. So, does somebody from Rescue want to give us just a overview of the map and, you know, the project? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to give it a shot. Uh, so, at our most recent uh, building committee meeting, there seemed to be some question uh, as to the timing of when we might have some assurances that we can start on the mission of basically making a rescue building that will ensure that Hardwick Rescue is, is viable. Right now, if anybody feels burned out, I assure you Hardwick Rescue is burned out. Um, we are doing more calls than ever before, the nature of the calls, and in order to service those calls, we need to retain, we need to employ, retain employees, promote volunteerism, all the things you read about in all the communities <coughs> around us that are losing their rescue services. And so right now, my take on it and is that we have a core group of folks that have been with Hardwick Rescue for many years that are, I mean, we have people in their 70s trooping upstairs and hauling people out now, and, and not just a few. And they have come together on this building committee to kind of, I didn't really know. I'm close enough, it's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, to, too, right. That one, uh, right, and um, to ensure that Hardwick Rescue continues. And so one of the things that they're doing is to 
rethink the space. We have employees now that sleep over, and we have employees that are willing to sleep on a couch with someone else sleeping right there um, just to be on call, which is not a modern workplace situation. And so we, we lose employees. And so what, we're, what this core group is saying, let's look around, let's see what building would work well for this community, and how can we do it? And we've been looking all, this isn't just this last few months. This has been for years now that we've been ruled out different ideas, bounced ideas off. But we're now at the stage where how do we, um, how do we go forward? How do we go to people that might support rescue? How do we start doing the grants, all that? Put that puzzle together. And the first thing is, with that ask, is you need to know where that <laughs> building's going to be. And so by talking with lots of people here, as I'm sure you're familiar, we've been feeling out. But it came down to this last meeting where it's like, well, wait, we can't start until we have some assurance that, that, that this idea will work. If this idea is not, does not seem like a good idea, for whatever reason, could be the timing, whatever, then Hardwood Rescue might move on to some other structure, you know, some other place. And my concern, and I'm speaking just for myself, is that could jeopardize Hardwick being the home base. There's already mutual aid. And if you, you know, calls take time. If our mutual aid is coming from Glover and Morrisville or Barry, we're going to have long response times. And so that's why I, I, I did send out an email to try to suggest that, like many projects, they can keep on getting bumped along. And um, the reason I'm hoping to encourage a, 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 a quicker thought on this and processing of it is um, I'm not sure how this placement works with the grand scheme of things but I'm not you know but we need to have an idea if that I think it would be great if it's all part of a, a plan but we need to get going because two three years down the road will be hard pressed to have a viable service. So That's my <laughs> thing. Thank you, and Harry, I should have asked you to introduce yourself. I think oh. I forgot that. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, Harry Bissett, um, Hardwick. Excellent. So, um, so thank you for bringing this to us, and I know this is not the first time, and this is not the first location, and we're, I think we're all aware this has been an evolving process over years. Um, and I don't know what others' reactions are, but my personal reaction is that that looks like a reasonable location, but I'd really love to see uh, how that fits in uh, with the so, plan on that plan, and I don't know where we are on that. So that's, yeah. So, i got a couple bunch of questions. The Rescue Squad has determined that they, you guys want to stay separate from so what's, I, I'm thinking fire station and, uh, police fire station and rescue building together. Um, we talked about that as well as even hopefully maybe even having a town garage. One facility, you know what I mean, one building, you have one heat system, you know what I mean, you have, you have showers for both departments, you know, you just have, you consolidate everything into a municipal complex, so to speak. As other communities have done. Right. Is that something that, that's what I've always envisioned doing. Um, and, and granted, I 100% agree with you folks, we need to move on this with rescue in order to keep people. So what do we need to do? What do we need to what do? What do we need to do? Looking at ourselves. And looking at ourselves to really get this, this ball rolling. And, and I'm not sure that answer tonight, but I would think, it would be great to be able to come up with something maybe in phases. Obviously, you folks may be a little bit ahead of us or whatever. It wouldn't necessarily need to be all done as one project. But I think if we're going to utilize that property for these these things, we need to, to get a plan started ASAP. So what do we need to do? We've started several times. 
I found out today that Patrick Kane did uh, some sort of uh, a building yeah. placement concept. Yeah. And, and I asked him, I spoke with Kaylee this afternoon and asked him for it. I can't find it anywhere in the office. I think he did, to be honest with you. I know we've yeah. had it surveyed. Yeah. I mean, we need to make it, we, I think, this is what I think, yeah. we need to make a really short, short term commitment here to get something done mm -hmm. in a couple, in a month or so, get us figured out what we need to do over there as a town, at, for a fire department and <clears throat> as well as you folks. Yeah. So my first response though is that it's my understanding within Harvard Rescue, because of the way it evolved, yeah. that this has been a service and a, a standalone <coughs> service that treats Hardwick as the other towns, right? right? Yep. It's not a town entity. Right. Yeah. And that may be something as simple as an MOU or a lease agreement with the, with the you guys are incorporated, right? Or you guys are incorporated. So, so, I mean, we can figure all that stuff out. Right, I but think. we have that independence, though. Right. And our vision is not to then be under that municipal building okay. yep. because that would change the whole nature yeah. of the squad could be for the better but right now we have a system that we think works right so and you're looking so, just for a piece of land is that what you're asking is nice? well a, a a piece of land that wouldn't interfere with all the uh, other project but then the i why that area jumps out at us is because we can keep our building intact rather than you know um, being at the anymore. fire department mm -hmm. upstairs or, or, or all options that we're willing to do because we're willing to do what we do anyway but to have the building that we can go okay now we don't need this building because this one's ready to go and then this build then the current rescue building can then be turned over to the town or some sort of fair exchange um, and I so, think just also to follow up, even staying, even in, in a standalone building, but staying on Creamery Road, <coughs> um, assuming that the town garage stays, the new town garage is there, which is our plan. I heard from Tim Nisbet that it's very beneficial to have rescue next door to the town garage because the town road crew is sometimes quite helpful. <coughs> And, and it's an incredibly central location yeah, that's central not location. flood prone. To so what I would love to do is just, I, it would be great if we could, I, and I know that this is going to feel like we never make a decision, but I'd love to have a little more time to, uh, I mean, Opie's already tried to dig up plans that we already have, look at those, see if we need to, to revisit or get some help with those, and just try to see, like, just looking at this, and from what I know, that seems the where you've drawn it seems like a reasonable location. I just well, it's a reasonable location. Because it's not the scale, but it's reasonable. <laughs> but but it'd be nice to see it drawn out with the other buildings, with the where. What's our future state? How's this all look? Where's the sand pile go? Where is the the? I'm sure half of that's probably the cold storage building. We got it already there. So we just need to. Do our due diligence, I feel. Kristen? We also need to do an overlay of zoning, too, and make sure that it's going to work with the zoning rules. Yep. So All those things. Good. Yeah. Yep. Zoning. And so, yeah, zoning. And who woke her up? And, <laughs> and I can also say that we are actively working on um, mitigation grants for the fire station. Um, we have NBDA has taken that on to try to get us. Um, design and scope, scoping and design for moving the fire station. Likely up to Creamery Road. Likely to that location. So that makes it really it, tight. But it's possible that it this shift, that as you've depicted it, it's possible that that would work great. Like if it worked with zoning and it worked with everything else that's right there, 
And if your project happens and then that frees up where the rescue building is now, then maybe that becomes part of the new town garage fire complex. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. But with, we'd like to see with planning we need to draw and architecture and things in mind. Yeah. You know, so that it's coordinated, so that it looks great from the rail trail and it looks, you know, all of that. And um, it's, and is, is not sharing a building with the town uh, like a non starter? Is that a it's probably not the non-sharing. It's a, we, did, we don't want to become a town uh, entity because we service seven towns. And so it, that, that would kind of get in the way with some of that, I think, as part of our thinking. But, but I don't know about sharing a, a building. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. I, think, I think this squad has spoken. I think they want to stay independent. We are non-for-profit. Yeah. Um, and it's worked for... I'm trying to 30, 50 years now, 52 years? Yes. Um, um, and I think that um, we've seen where other squads have come in under municipalities and we have seen problems that were once independent squads. So Heart Rate Rescue is working. We are very strong. We're viable. We're financially viable. Um, so I think as a squad, we were looking at just staying independent like we are. And as Rob said, we're serving seven seven towns, so keep that independence that we can show each town as a part of them. It, it would be easier for us to say, yeah, let's, let's, let's have you guys do it, and we'll take a corner of it. But th that would not be the tradition of heart rescue that we've had so far. No, year. but it would, you know, it, 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 may, be, it, it, it may be a, it may be a financial, uh, uh, yeah, I just, I think, you know, you guys need to be realistic about the future. And reducing costs of, of, for, for your facilities is a huge, huge thing. And the building or the maintenance later on? All of it. I mean, so if we go out and we raise money for the building, yeah, all and right, then all we fine. have to do, we're, because we're not coming asking for your money. Your message is we're very just, clear. Okay. You're not asking for money. Here. I apologize. It was a no, no, joke to no, no, And I joke. Um, this is serious now. And in, in my mind, that's, I think it's, I think it's, I just, uh, I, I'm thinking money. And I'm thinking you folks are struggling now. No, I'm thinking that, but, that's not correct. Well, we're struggling for as as budgets go up in municipalities. You go to those seven towns, and and it becomes a, a cost that the town can no longer support. And says, "Sorry, we really appreciate it. We really need you. We really want you, but we don't have the money for this anymore." I think there's some huge confusion about the fact that the town has enough money to continue to just keep adding, you know, cost every year that we don't have control over. So. Budgets are important. So why wouldn't you want us to be separate? Um, I, as far as my offer was for you folks to be separate as you want to be, I'm talking about a facility. And a facility, leasing a facility or owning a facility shouldn't, doesn't make or break uh, a nonprofit uh, or, or any kind of organization. So I, I'm confused as to why this feeling is so strong that we have to be independent when we're talking about a facility. Uh, for me, that's a building. So, yeah, viewed from another angle, um, you know, in your current location, I believe that Rescue leases the land for like a dollar a year or something, right? Yeah. So, you're, you're leasing the land. Um, how different is it really to like lease space in a building? I don't know that that's, so it's, it's, you still could be an independent you know, organization. I understand you I'm not saying that you need yeah. to, you, I don't, I don't really have a strong feeling either way. I think what Danny's trying to say is there might, that it's possible that there are economies of scale and that if it turns out that the town's building a big building that has lots of space for fire trucks and, and um, road trucks and it could also have a couple ambulances and it happens to have a nice wash bay that you can use and you know it might be it might be a good shared resource but it it's not you know we're not going to push you to do it no no it's clear you don't want to do it so that's fine <laughs> well down down the road the maintenance costs that that's not what's driving the budget busting parts of health care i understand that 
I, but but, the, but it's I, a cost. I totally understand that. But it, that's a cost that obviously, if you lower a cost, the total cost goes down. That's all. So anyway, enough said. We'll build the sermon. As far as I'm concerned, we'll figure out what we're going to do. And, I don't think it's a case exactly as well as just that uh, we would object to being in a facility with the fire department. It, it, it's, it, that's not, we just not sure that it would come along soon enough. We, we want to get right. going. That's a, and, that's a and that's definite possibility. We, we have people, you know, who are like Harry was saying, they're, they're sleeping on, you know, uh, couch, couches when they stay over. And, and in the old days, there were a lot of people in town, worked in town, and they could run over and, and, and make a call. Now, people have to come in from wherever, and they're not all in Harvard. They're, they're coming in from all over, and then they stay. And I, you know, staying overnight, if you visit our wonderful facilities, and you see where they get to stay overnight, and the bathroom they get to use, and the, the sure. shower that doesn't Yeah, no, I think we, yeah, it's, it's, we it's, really it's, understand we that. We need a sure. better facility. And, Time scale is a very important thing to that for us. Yep. We have some good employees and volunteers, and we don't want to lose more. So is this the task force thing, or is this a special yeah. meeting thing? I think Obviously, it's not going to happen in a regular select board meeting. We're not going to be able to sort all of this out. Um, well, but I think so folks already started doing the legwork on finding out what we already have had done. Right. And I think that's so the big first step, and then finding out what we need to do. Right. But I mean, that, that's clearly we're, they're looking to move get quick, more quickly. For and you're probably going to move quick, more quickly than we are. But I would still like, I think it's possible that we could develop a site plan in a timely manner. If we, and we may already have one. For the entire site. Right. And, and just verify. I, I think that I mean I'm I don't I don't think this is popular because we just had a side conversation about it but I mean I just had a thought of that cold storage building is all insulated and you could easily add on to that for quarters and that's a large I don't know the, for for being able to move you out of that current building and add on to the cold storage building. Um, I, I think you're pretty just, close to this drawing right here. Right. To that cold that storage. Yeah, I think. And that's the cold storage, but it's, maybe it's not, not exactly, in. but which again, and then it is a great idea. And we're going to be transparent here. Tom and I had a conversation about it today, and the soil in that area is contam is very contaminated with with because there was diesel tanks there. So any grant funded building is going to have to require soil testing, potentially, and we're going to run into that. So. Sure, all that so over there are pretty really right. bad. It was a railroad siding and then it was a right. diesel. Right. So yeah. there's yeah. some that site is there's some obstacles with that site. Um, it's it's not nothing none of this has been ideal and it's a real head scratcher where where we can do where what we can do there. You know, that, I talk we've talked about the big pile of sand. We have a gravel pit down the Crossbury Road now. Do we need that big pile of sand there? You know, it's it's just we have to truck it one way or the other. And beating the plows and the dump trucks down Route 14 all winter long is worse than trucking winter sand in the summer, on, in the summer without a plow. So yeah, I don't know what the ideal answer is, but but a shared building with a, a single heat source. And a single electric bill, and like that's that's efficient. <coughs> and having four buildings there, and I understand that the autonomy that Hardwick Rescue wants to keep, I do, I really do. But we have to think about you do come to us every year with a but with an ask for the town. So we are we are e e funding what we do to other towns. It, right. Totally, but it, this year we're Lindsay's right. going to be here later on tonight, and we have there's rumor we hear it, it's a 21 percent budget increase. I mean that's huge, 24 percent. I know you ask all the time. I'd say that's unrelated though to this building project. I think though that in the grand scheme, the keeping your costs low is, is you have costs. Is yeah, and if there's a way to lower your costs over a long run, and, it might be worth. 
look at that. Doesn't mean you have to do it, but it may be worth considering it. We don't want to micromanage. Check what's work. happening in other Cambridge and also check what happens when they come from Barry or Glover and the billing that will go on and the increased costs yeah. to the town. We don't want to do that. So I think I can I can say I think I can say that we definitely support Heart of Rescue. Mm -hmm. That we want to help you find a location. Maybe this is the location. If that's not the location, we're happy to help you find a look like a location. But I really personally I feel more comfortable if we could at least look at what we have already considered for mapping out for the project that we want to do it so, yeah, and make sure it fits and that that's a good place. I can go out on the limb and personally can tell you I don't think that you I don't think there's enough room over there for us to give away any land. Did you guys already measure that the building they're proposing will fit in that location? Okay. Well it's that's part of the problem. We've got we've done preliminary plans for where we are now to try to expand that building. Yeah. Our ultimate goal was to have three bays. Um, yep. You're looking 20, 30 years down the road, you're probably going to want another ambulance. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I can't get a full bay in there. I can get a small a half bay mm -hmm. um, or a regular car bay in there, not an ambulance bay. Um, so we can do something there. Is it ultimately what we'd like to do with that kind of money and trying to expand? No. So the other thought was this, this site would allow us to configure it a little bit differently. Um, so to say, can I get it in there? I, I don't know because I haven't got any of the measurements. It's like, like I guess if you're talk, if you're talking physical footprint, you can tear down the current building. You could, you know, you, the current rescue building would be yours to do whatever you want with. So it's not like you're losing land by giving. No, that's up. not the question. I think the question, as Danny's looking at this, is in that area where the new rescue building is depicted. You're kind of backed into a corner of the property, yeah. so there are setbacks. Right, yeah. And then there's, a, well, the and then there's an existing. That, exist. that property lines up on the bank. So the, up on the bank. And so the practical, so, there's a practical corner with right. a granite wall or something in there. So right? that's, and then, that's and then there's the, we have a relatively new steel building right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think the, the question is, you has anyone measured on the ground that the footprint of the proposed building fits? There. We have we have looked at it and we feel like we could make it fit. I guess with the building, the cold storage building, I'm not even sure how you would use where we're proposing with the because you're going to be doing something on the other side. Is that right? Unless we were used it as like a sand pile or gravel pile, right. like we have other yeah. needs that are right so. adjacent to the. So it it sounds not to speak for us, but we'll go back to the the committee meeting and say. You guys are going to look into it, and we might, we should consider other options. Is that what I'm hearing? Um, I mean, I guess you, sh you should. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to come back. So can you tap, can you give, so 68 by 54, that's the dimensions of the building that that's you That's roughly what we're, well, 64 by 54. Roughly, so I'm going to go over there and measure them out okay. and settle, you know, for kind of even be done. Start with uh, with the existing thing there. So is it 68 by, give me the dimensions of the building that you want. 64 by 54. 64 by 54. Uh, so January 4th, is that our first time reading? Oh, yeah, it must be. Mm -hmm. So by January 4th, Obi and I and Eric and Tommy and whoever else will at least have a basic of understanding of what we have as far as, um, you know, do we have some blueprints or whatever? Is there any assessments? We, where we're at with this property? And go over and actually put, put a tape on the ground with the existing cold storage building there, make sure we have room, check with our zoning person to make sure that we can put a basic rectangle building that size in that space. We can at least do that before the floor. 
and, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll know we'll if it's possible. Right. And we'll likely yeah. have our dug up the existing right. plans yeah. if we have any. We will. We'll at least, I'm sure, know if they exist by then. I mean, and then we'll, then we'll at least know if we can even do it. Right? You know what I mean? There's no reason that we'll. And that's all we were at. I, I would like. We'll, we'll give you something on the fourth. I'll make sure we do something on the fourth there. God, I don't know why I hope. I hope that it works because I, I, I think yeah, the fun. people of Hardwick really value having Hardwick Rescue right in town. It's great. No, I think it needs to stay here. Yeah. You have, trust me, my thoughts are to make sure it stays here for a long time. Not to do it against you guys, but if you're, you know, like you say, if you guys are going to raise the money to build your building and stay independent, then we'll, we'll take a look at that corner and we'll, and we have no interest in running Hardwick Rescue as mm -hmm. long as you guys can run it. No. Like, I don't want to. I mean, we have enough going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> so, yeah, we will definitely we'll do our get homework. We'll actually do something. And <coughs> we can move that great big sand pile over to the old fire station site later on. Oh. oh. There's going to be one thing. Oh, and wash it, wash away. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The state yeah. wouldn't allow Everything will be gone yeah. at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Washes if away. we do get something from that, probably they're going to restrict what we can do there anyway, right? Um, we can't mm -hmm. stockpile material in the floodplain. No. No? No. Oh. no. The contaminated soil that's in the floodplain down at the Yellow Barn site um, can't be there. And it is. And okay. the sand that we took out of the lagoons can't be there, and it is. But those are temporary. Yeah. They're temporary. Yeah, but I guess the sand pile is temporary. Okay. It's ephemeral. Everything's temporary, actually. So. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. You get yeah. 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 Okay. I got to rein us in. I really appreciate you guys coming. We strongly support Hardwick Rescue. We're going to look at this and see for sure whether we can make it work or not. Do you want them to come back on the fourth? They, they, they're one of the I hope they'll be on the agenda. Can you put stakes when you're measuring? Or I can even come down. Yeah, you can on your head. All right. On your head. I'll run the dumb end. Yeah. All right. No, we'll get that done. I won't take a minute. That's the first thing we got to do. Then we'll move on from there. But we'll have it on the agenda for the fourth report. Eric and I. And these guys. Thank you. Um, where I know I'm supposed to be driving or moving here, and I'm not. So, uh, oh I make a motion that we approve the revised hazard mitigation plan. Second. Excellent. Fix all the typos, right? <coughs> not you guys. Well, Ms. Her zoning is Chris Chris and floodplain manager. Whatever. I didn't fix everything. Oh, but you fixed the egregious mistakes. I fixed the egregious mistakes. I did not touch anything that would change the substance of the report, so it would have to go back to be reapproved. But Hardwick, the town no longer sits on the Moore Reservoir. It's Correct. no longer adjacent to the Pasumpsic River. The wastewater treatment facility was impacted by the flooding in 2023. Right. Yes. yes, all the things that were. And I made sure that the information matched each other. Right, like there were always consistently two dams. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good. Thank you very much for taking that on. Well, I checked all that. That's why I made the most. Did you? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember about three quarters of it was the first time. That was a lot of it. Sorry. There's a motion on the table. Any more discussion? All in favor of approving it, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you again, Kristen. We have one that we need to sign. Oh, yes. Uh, next, while we're signing that, we have uh, library and rec to go over the proposed fiscal year 25 budgets. And then Casey, the business manager, to recap the entire budget draft. <coughs> um, so, sorry, I should. So, library. So, library. 
someone. Can, nope. I was like, can we well, let recreation go first? Rec go first. So he can, because his will be really quick and then he can. So we have them. on the Zoom, we have Jason Daner. Do you want to uh, just give us a quick uh, summary of the rec budget, please? You know, can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Sorry, I couldn't be there first. I've got the uh, twins and a five month old baby at home with my wife, but uh, we're hanging in there. So, very quickly, we, um, after much discussion and a little bit of persuasion, we are okay with the um, budget. However, we do want to change um, some of the line. So, if you, you go to the budget sheet, it says um, that maintenance. They moved um, $2,500 to maintenance. We don't really maintain much, so we'd like to move $1,500 of that to community programming in the line. Uh, besides that, we are okay with um, that decrease because obviously we have surplus every year. We can't argue with that, and I think we're ready to, to um, you know, accept that. So being simple, we are okay with the budget change. We just want to add, take $1,500 to maintenance and add it to community programming. Okay, the only thing I want to note is that the last couple of years, the maintenance has been around 2000 to 2500 because of the skating rink and also the portable toilet over at Macville. So that's kind of... I mean, we could maybe do 2000 I, I was just thinking that based on actual spending the last the couple of years. The actual 2800 right? Yeah, the last, that was mostly because of the skating ring, but it seems like every year we end up spending like $1,000, $1,500 on that. So that's where the maintenance piece came in. Um, so we, we purchased items for the skating ring. There was a flop last year. I, you know, I'm not optimistic this year about anything winter-wise. Um, and I... I'm curious to hear about the porta potty at Macville because I think after the flood, or even prior to that, there wasn't a porta potty at Macville. Can someone? Oh, maybe there wasn't this year. There has been every other. Yeah, there year. was. There was. Yeah. It was there. Okay. So there was one this year because I did not see one up there after the flood. Did it wash away? No, it was right <laughs> next to the parking area. Yeah, I thought I saw that. Actually, I haven't seen a bill for it yet, but I'm sure there's one coming there. You know, we get one later in the year, but yeah. All right. Well, either way, you know, we okay. I don't know about $2,500 of maintenance for things that we don't really maintain. In essence, is a lot of money, so we'd like to move that um, after discussion with OP in the past. I mean, moving money from a line item. Is you know it's umbrella money, so it can be there if we need it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so you do eighty five hundred in community work. programming and fifteen hundred in maintenance. Then. So what are you going to use it for? Program. Sorry, what's that? Well, so what are you going to use it? What are you going to use the money for? Because with the trail budget going up twenty one percent, you know, if you if you folks are just moving money around that you're not going to use, let's put it over in community in the trails for programs and activities or something. So that, that's the idea. We want to move that, that $1,500 from maintenance to community programming. Right, but what are you going to do with the, what are you, what are you, what's your community programming that you're going to increase? Well, that, I guess in that, that conversation is a way to be seen to the committee. Besides, right. Yeah. That, you know? Yeah. I, I can't make a decision on that. If I yeah, find yeah. a way, you know, I would, invest in the rail trail stuff or to do whatever. I think it's complicated because I can't make those decisions. It's a community decision, a community decision. Um, and I basically wait for a vote and we, they approve it and we, we go for it. So um, in that regard, that's more of a conversation to have with the committee and not with me or, you know, some powers to be. I just know that $2,500 is made in seems steep and we don't have a lot. You know, we're not maintaining playgrounds, the ice rink we already have materials for. I do want to say that um, I think, Danny, the conversation was that you would help maintain an ice rink if one did happen, and I feel that you should be compensated for that. Um, so that would obviously come out of maintenance in the long run, but I don't see that being, you know, 
a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars. You know, at this rate, we don't know what's going to happen in the winter. Okay, so I'll just make those adjustments to one thousand in maintenance and eighty-five hundred in training programming, and that's your final, right, Jason? Well, this is final. I'm sorry, what's that? I, I, so oh, I just said I'll move, uh, it'll be 8,500 community programming and 1,000 in maintenance. Yeah, so I think that the maintenance line is at 2,500 right now. Correct. Right. We're moving, you're moving 1,500 of it over. Yeah. So it doesn't change the bottom line. Right. Okay. All right. And I guess if we have to borrow a computer to pay Paul in the long run or something, it's, you know, that's okay to do that, correct? Correct. You understand the line, yes, if that yeah. happens, yeah. Right. It can be properly explained, I, yes. So it would be 7% goes to Peter. <laughs> What's that? 7% goes to Peter. Oh boy, I, I don't need Paul then. Uh, yeah, right. I think that's where we're at. And I understand that, you know, decreases happen, and I'm okay with that. Um, we're not asking for more money. We're just asking to move that line item and, and juggle that money in that word play a little better, that's all. Great, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Have a happy holiday. You too. too. Thank you. So that is a proposed budget. Yep. From us. From you. From me. No, that's okay. I understand a little more about it now. Great. Awesome. So next up, library. Yes. <laughs> uh, who's taking the lead up? Daphne. Daphne. This is Daphne Kilmar. Hi. I'm Hi. the treasurer. Um, Keeper of the beans. <laughs> the mover of the beans. Okay. Um, the budget has gone up primarily because of salaries, which everything else is down to bare bones, as it usually is with the library budget. Um, and the public library compensation and salary survey analysis was done by Vermont Department of Libraries this year. They hadn't done it in like 10 years or something, and they finally did. And they came up with, they did surveys on salaries for various employees at libraries, and it's broken out by population bands. And we're in the 2,000 to 4,000 population band. Although our library does serve, in reality, six or seven communities. So that's not entirely accurate. But to stick to the population band of Hardwick, um, we are still below the average pay for libraries within that population band. Um, the average hourly wage for library directors is $24.92. And <coughs> currently, our library director receives $22. And we wanted to at least push that up to the average, despite the fact it should go higher because Diane now has a masters in library science and most library directors within that population band do not have that kind of education. Um, so is that increase reflected in the, the proposed budget? Yes. Okay. And then Kevin, yeah. What are some of the other communities that are, that are in that same band? I don't know the names of the towns. Their population is between 2,000 and 4,000. Right, and my question is, what are those towns? Hardwood is one of them. What are the others? What are some of the others? Who are we being compared to is what I'm really trying to get at. It's across the whole state. Yes, right? it's, it's across, across the whole, whole state, state right? Yeah. But there's a band of two to 4,000 right. population towns. The question is, what are In the survey, do they list what towns fall in that? Probably, but I don't have that data. Oh, you don't have it. Right. Okay. The, the, the 20,000 plus band librarians receive on average $44.70 an hour. So it's twice, almost twice. Um, so it's, 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 it's around around you guys are on this So we're currently below the average, and our librarian has a master's. 
um, and eight years of library experience. The other increase is for Kevin, who wears two hats. He's both a library assistant, clerk, library technician, because he does a lot of tech work over the library, and he's been there for a long time, and he's invaluable. Um, he currently makes $15.60 an hour, which is, we've been trying to push it up over the last few years, so we can show you, but it's the, within that band, the average is $19.23 for a library tech, and it's $15.67 for a clerk, but he is more, he's a library assistant with what he does. He covers the library completely when the other librarians are not there. So he has a lot of responsibility. And he's not even making the 2022 Vermont Rural Basic Needs Wage is stated at $18.80. So he's, we've been trying to push his up too because we're way underpaying. And he's incredibly valuable to the library. Um, the problem is our budget is, is almost all salary. Um, and because of that, any increase looks really drastic in terms of percentage. Um, and we understand that, but we also feel it's really important. Well, there's a, there is another factor in this, which is that in the current fiscal year, they were going to use some of their fund balance from the prior year, but in the upcoming year of 25, there won't really be much fund balance to use. So, like, that's like income that went away that would offset what they asked for. So, it's really just that set, just salaries, and the fact that there's no fund balance to carry over to the next year. And it only recently disappeared. So, we thought we were at 10%, and then we got the bad news that the yeah. unbalance was, was not available for us to pull down the percentage. We did that last year to the tune of 12 grand. Yeah, and this year, and this, you won't use all the 12 because <coughs> you didn't carry over as much. It's going to be really low, like come the end of 24. It'll, yeah. it'll be almost depleted. Mm -hmm. It'll be like, you know, break even. So. Thank you. So, questions? Yeah, so um, the building, so the whole library budget is right here in this library budget, the building budget, right here at the bottom. Yes, that's the. So what is, what's happening with the addition as far as? Um, well, we've, we've factored in some increases in electrical and fuel. Um, the, the maintenance, but it, it's not really that much. Um, and, and so the cost of the addition is gone. Yeah, this not the the cost of the addition is not. There's nothing. nothing just the, just the operating expenses are in here, right? And they've increased their electricity just a little bit to compensate for a bigger space and heating. And the background on the addition is that, you know, it was originally a $1.5 million project and the bond was roughly a third, but it's now going to be about a $3.5 million project, and so the bond is about a seventh of it, but we're raising all the rest of it elsewhere, primarily federal. So we're getting a nice investment for our town. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of research that shows that return on investment for libraries is roughly five to one. So. Now I know you guys had a meeting recently with the Vermont Department of we Libraries. Did. I didn't get to hear the result of that um, because they've had a lot of grant funds available but haven't put out the application. Any I can give an update, that? yeah. We met, so we have a, a long meeting with the uh, state librarian and the two assistant state librarians. They went out of their way to meet with us individually and just uh, with several board members. What they told us is that they, um, they explained the long delay, various factors, but they are expecting to open those applications in January. Um, the good news we got was that 
we weren't sure whether they were going to try to distribute that, you know, like $25 to every library, but they're not doing it that way. They're going to give significant grants to the libraries that are closest to being able to use <coughs> this money um, completely by 2026. So we're so the fact that you're mid construction is will be great, very advantageous, very advantageous, and they gave us some real um, advice on how to structure the application um, and the um, the angles for how to how this will increase access for education and jobs and inter via internet. So they gave us a lot of really useful <coughs> intel on. And so their cap is about 900,000. And we expect that we will apply for somewhere between six and seven to finish the building. And that will and be like kind of the last dollar? To Hopefully be the last there. dollar. Um, we had some that we knew we already had to raise to finish the lower level. And then with the soil issues that we hit this summer, um, it's looking like that's going to add roughly three. Um, not as bad as we first thought. We first thought it might be closer to five, but it's looking like it's going to be closer to three, depending on how much we spent on, spend on winter conditions. Um, but uh, so yeah, between those two, that's what we think we will need to finish it down. So I have a question that's not exactly budget. Do you have a, um, a, is there a timeline for, or when do you think you're going to hit substantial completion on the um, It's slated for early August right now. Okay. Um, the way it's going to work is that we have a change order for the soil conditions, and we're offsetting it with a change order that takes things out of the finishing so that we stay in the budget that we contracted for. But as we either add money or um, don't spend some of the money that's in the change order, it will all so we'll get toward finishing everything at the end. I also wanted to mention that um, while you guys didn't do a capital campaign, um, we do still continue to get donations for um, for this project. Um, you know, twenty five hundred here, five thousand here. Every little bit helps, and people are still very supportive of the library. We're still getting donations for the project. Right? We Literally. didn't even put out. We didn't put right, out so a like didn't do a We didn't do the one this fall because we knew we would want to do it in the spring mm -hmm. to finish the building, and we didn't we didn't know exactly how much we would need, so we held off, and we're planning to do it in the spring. So that will add another chunk. Would you like me to answer my question? Yes. Um, in the two to four thousand dollar, two to four thousand people range, two thousand sixty-five is or two thousand and three is Ludlow Town. It goes up Starksboro, Moncton, Grand Isle, Sheldon, Danville, um, up around. They they list Hardwick as twenty-nine fifty just above Pittsburgh, just below Westminster Town, Chester, Woodstock, Hyde Park, Underhill, and at the 4,000 level, we've got Rutland Town, Charlotte, Cambridge Town, Bristol, et cetera. So that's, that's who we are lumped with. The, the highest pay within that band, in case you're interested, sure. for, for a library director is 43.95 an hour. So, it's so we're asking, these guys. We're asking for twenty four sure. ninety two. Sure. Yeah, that's my guess. Yeah, I mean <laughs> hearing those towns, I'm like, okay. But we have a gem. We have Diane, we have Kevin, we have Marilyn, we have incredible people. And we haven't raised Marilyn's because she was really right on the average. Right? Yeah, Marilyn is right on the average, so just cola. So and they're ready to launch the new library. Yeah. Thank you. No librarian's ever paid enough. And I had a long career in library science and archives, and I never had the courage to deal with the public. You know, the, the dealing with the public is dealing with a lot of unknowns, and it's, it's a courageous job. Yeah. Are you coming in? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Never a dull moment. <laughs> Managing the public bathroom. Real, real yeah, yeah, things that people don't know about. There are lots of things. I love the public. <laughs> It's my, bread, it's my bread and butter. It's my bread and butter. No, it's fine. Bring it on. So, this is great. Um, thank you for for explanations. Uh, I think we all understand. I mean, across the town budget, we're looking to try to adjust to the same things, to salaries and to um, increasing costs. And we get it. Um, and uh, thanks for the updates on the building project. It uh, could be pretty exciting if that actually was wrapped up next summer. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure it'd be very exciting for you. Very exciting for all of us. Thank you for hanging in there. Yeah. You, 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 you ridden a rough horse on this one. <laughs> Joey needs a medal. She yeah. does. She's I would say a halo. Or a vacation. Right. Term limits. <laughs> okay, so. We have them. Okay. <laughs> we need to move on yes. to recapping the entire budget. Is what so we're not going to go through. What I'm going to talk about is where we are right now yeah. and what changes we I've made and since information's come in at the last meeting. Um, yep. We have Lindsay Osteen here from Hardwick Rescue to talk about their increase. Um, and in your folder, we there was like the equity committee budget that, that's minor, but they just shared what there was, um, and I think that's it. So right now we're at nine point nine six um, percent <coughs> increase to percent our increase budget. To the budget, yes. Yep. Um, I was able to get updated insurance figures for workers' comp, unemployment, and property, um, so that. We at least already know what the first half of 25 looks like, so I was so able pretty to pretty solid assume, on that. Yeah, yeah, pretty close on that. Um, so those were all updated. Um, skinnied up capital a little because, as we talked about last time, a lot of our biggest increases are in salaries and benefits, and so um, and when we're dealing with collective bargaining. There's not as much flexibility as that. We have agreements in place, and so um, kind of here and there. Um, uh, equipment was one that um, I skinnied up a little bit, um, went to 265. It leaves a thin margin, but again, we're, I know last time you really hoped for it to be at least under 10. Obviously, less would be better, but um, we're slightly under 10 right now. Um, and so I also um, took a little bit from didn't do anything with fire, um, roads, I caught a smidge there, and I did a little bit in the general capital, like, you know, um, bridges, I went from 15 to 10. I just cut some of these things down because there really isn't a lot of other places to cut, <laughs> honestly. Um, so it's, um, I, we're not looking to make a decision tonight. This is, this is where we stand, and so it's, um, at the next meeting, deciding, I mean, tonight we can talk about mm -hmm. where you think there can be additional cuts, um, if at all possible. I know Tom's scribbling on my paper here saying that the next dump truck I have in at 220 needs to be 280. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, eh. it's not helpful. Um, <laughs> it looks. So, um, you know, and so Tom and I have had this conversation what's happening with. There's such a lead time on these trucks that it's going to make it so that we can no longer trade our trucks because we can't be without them. So normally we trade in a truck and get what forty to sixty thousand dollars for it off the price. Well, that's not going to happen now. We're going to end up paying paying full sticker price, turning around, putting the truck out to bid privately in the newspaper, whatever, and we get twenty, thirty grand for it. Like it's. Potential because every, they're everywhere. It's but the difference is you go down to like you go to these places now you'll see that Clark's has got ten used plow trucks out there. They're they're not moving. They're everywhere no. So they they farm them out, put them on the boat, send them overseas, and you know eventually get rid of them. But so we're not going to be able to do that when we're parking. Yeah, because you know, our problem right now is it's it's not getting a chassis. It's getting in to get it built. Because right now, I could get a chassis here for the first thing in the spring like we normally would do, get it in May or whatever, 
but our body build would be scheduled until the end of December into January the following year. So it's one of those things where instead of ordering trucks in spring, we might have to wait the entire year, order towards October, November, and have a build, you know, hopefully in the spring of the following year. So we're going to be possibly going out at least another year longer with the trucks. Business model just amazes me. So, the business model? Yeah, I mean, just. Mm -hmm. It's still I do not amazing. Understand. You can't, you can't get parts still. After. No, and it doesn't matter. I mean, my son-in-law drives. He's got a brand new truck, three months old, brand new Peterbilt. It's been down, to, it's been two and a half weeks now. Peterbilt just barely. You know, yeah. They still don't. It's it's running now, but they still sure really don't know if they fixed it or not. I mean, yeah, the cost. It's a three hundred. $20,000 truck. Yeah, the cost for us to do repairs this year is going to be, yeah, it's it's going to be crazy. Uh, even doing roads and stuff, trying to trying to repair those. I mean, well, I know we're trying to cut budget and stuff, but we're going to have to, we're going to have to back off. Yeah. We, we can't do it because, you know, gravel last year it went from $4 from crushing up to $6. I can imagine it's going to go up to six fifty yeah. again, oh, sure. and so the sixty thousand that we had in there for both, you know, getting stuff material over at, you know, for stay mat and stuff like that to help some of our roads, you know, the bulk of that's just going to be for just for crushing. You know, same thing with ditch stone and everything else. I mean, that stuff's you know nineteen twenty dollars a yard now. Where where are we with uh, permitting some uh, blasting and the new gravel? Gary's working on it. Nice. Actively. Great. I mean, ultimately, the sooner we get that started, the, so it's going to cost us money, but once we get into it, the future is there, I think, for sure. Yep. I mean, if Tommy's saying it's 19 bucks a yard for crushed stone products. Yeah. Well, not only that, you got to go to Danville to get it. So yeah. I'm going to go to 12. Huh? If we could do it for 12. Yeah, you're right. You'd only go out to Crasper Road. So. I mean, that's long term, that's huge. Gary's working on an SOP, kind of an SOP management plan for the pit, and also the, the active with the permit. Great. Oh. Do, you, do we have a target ETA on that? ASAP. <laughs> okay. okay. I don't. I know we don't have any influence over how quickly active 50 moves. Right. Yeah. Right, but right now we need to strike right now. Um, Let's do it. Ten percent. Everybody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, and so you know, the thing is, is um, I don't think this is exciting for any of us to have to present to voters. It's not exciting, but the inflation has really started to catch up, and um, you know, I feel like we're not we're not really spilly, willy. You know, we're not just spending money. We're we're trying to keep. The bare minimum to keep the town going, keep the roads in good shape, um, keep everyone safe, and retain this, this is and retain employees, and this this is where it's at. <laughs> I also think that in years, the past couple of years of drastic inflation, we didn't have drastic increases in our budget, and I think that there's just a bit of a delayed effect mm -hmm. that's hitting us now, where we're we're looking now squarely at. Um, employees being underpaid relative to the market in some cases, like the library has brought, um, and we're looking at just massive increases in equipment, like Tom's talking about the truck, increases in the thing Well, we had to do that with, us, with all our stuff a few years ago, right? But, but we have, our town budget is, I feel like this is the first time we're hitting this big increase that's been looming, right. it's been building right. for the past couple of years, yeah, and it's finally never, hit our budget. As long as I've been doing this, I've never seen a truck right. from the last one that we bought three years ago increase by almost $100,000. Right. That's, that's a huge Between the chassis and the body, I mean, yeah. that's just... The other thing was when you were naming off those towns earlier, the band there, the population, um, I heard towns, sorry about that, I thought I shut it off. Um, Harvick has a fair amount of things that the majority of those towns you mentioned doesn't have, including police department, a large fire department, uh, 
I wrote who's twice the size of these towns that you mentioned, all on the lower list. They get two guys, three guys. Um, you know, we we have a lot here that a lot of towns our size don't have. So if you're going to have those things, you need to pay for those things. And that's, I think we've done well to, to maintain these services in the town and not have to raise taxes double digits since I've been here. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's the long, we've all been here a long time. What's the highest we've had? Three, five, six. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember that, but numbers yeah. aren't my best game. We, we traditionally targeted 3%. 3%, 3%, 4%. What inflation has been? I think there was a six one time with yep. the markets or something. So it is what it is. I mean, at least for right now, I feel like this is a, like a, here's what we have. It's been, uh, Casey's validated as many numbers as we can in terms of getting actuals for costs on things. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like earlier in the process so where she's still waiting. Out there. When do we have to finalize this by? The next meeting because the town is So we the word out so there that this is, you know, that I think that we want to hear from people. Increase. And if you're not here with some, with some ideas, I do wish that we had more people that came when we talked about the budget and so that it wasn't like a big Tonight shocker. we have a lot of people, which I actually, I know that a lot of people came We're interested in lowering the budget, though, that's the problem. No but, no, but we have people here for various reasons tonight, and I think it's great that you've all stayed for this budget discussion um, because it's important um, to sort of tell your friends and neighbors. And I think the civil order addresses this whole problem. Okay. All right. I'd like to get on the agenda so we can actually talk about that. Okay, another time. Yeah. I second that. Okay. Um, so, uh, I don't know if we have a lot more. So, Lindsay's here. Thank you for coming. Sure. Uh, um, do you want to say anything about the Nobody's really rescue <laughs> budget? We, we've heard about rescue, the building project tonight, but do you want to say anything about the rescue operating budget? Yeah, so um, unfortunately, like anything else, you're looking at, you know, I was just looking at the police department budget, your payroll increase is 22%. Um, you know, Harvard Rescue, we need to hire another full-time staff member, and that payroll is what was reflected in the appropriations um, as the main increase. Um, so it is a sizable increase, it's $50,000, not for part of it in town, but across the board. So our appropriations went from $150,000 to $200,000, and that whole is really reflected in the payroll. Um, you will see some line item changes in terms of professional services. Morristown no longer does paramedic intercepts for us for free. We have to pay them every single time we need a paramedic, and we don't have one. And given the state protocols, a lot of times we are required sorry, Casey, to, to call for a paramedic um, because we operate under the physician's <coughs> written orders that say, if this, do that. Um, so we have to pay for that. So that was the increase there. Our um, insurance went up across the board. Um, our workman's comp went up. Unfortunately, we had one member who got pretty seriously injured um, and required surgery. So, of course, we got hammered on the workman's comp. Yay. Um, so, unfortunately, that went up. We're spending in terms of membership. You'll see a change there. It's less than $200 per member. We fluctuate between 50 and 60 people um, <coughs> on our roster. So, you're looking at about $160 per person that we spend for sweatshirts. Um, t-shirts, a winter hat, it's pretty basic. Um, some food for folks who stay there. The building will alleviate a lot of our issues currently with membership. We have one person who's staying there for 36 hours this week, spread out amongst the week, who doesn't live in our town. Those of us who are here from Hardwick, we, we pretty much work and, and do this service and then we pay for it in our taxes. So we wouldn't be asking for the increase if we didn't think it was essential to the mission of Hardwick and providing high quality ALS services. Um, we also try to pay a livable wage. It's really important. We, we don't have the opportunity to offer municipal benefits with you know town retirements and things like that. So we do contribute to retirement for our contracted employees. Um, they get 80% of their health insurance paid for. That includes dental. So we really are trying very much to be a a good place to work um, 
that wants you to succeed in life outside of what, what you do for the people of our town and, and other towns. Um, <coughs> so hopefully the building will help a lot because we can get some younger folks to, to come in and be able to stay. Pretty much we have at times two people sleeping in a meeting room with two beds and a temporary divider in between. And that's a lot to ask adults and, you know, opposite sex individuals to sleep in a common room together. So I think that will really, over the long term, improve our situation. Um, yeah, if you guys well, have anything this to add. Is I, this is side thing on that facility. We don't even have a kitchen sink for yeah. people staying over. They do their dishes in the slop sink in the, in the garage, you know, it, it's, <laughs> which is... Uh, we, we don't even really have a shower that yeah. you can shower in. So what we do is we pay for memberships at the Hardwick Gym. Um, so that we have access to showers and, and things like that. So we're able to support another local business while solving one of our kind of immediate problems. So if you volunteer with us for a shift a week, you get a free gym membership. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you guys have any specific questions, we did come down on a couple of things, but overall you'll see through our service income, through insurance, you know, we we're able to buffer all the other changes. It really comes down to the payroll line is essentially where our appropriation rate is. Um, and you guys, unfortunately, you know, the town of Hardwick is 45.11% of our call volume. If that continues to go down, we did have a little dip um, down. We averaged it over five years, so I have those numbers if you want to talk about that. Um, did go down a little bit last year. Um, we're trying to address with our community partners some of our frequent flyers um, to alleviate having to constantly go to these people. Um, so we're trying to work with the health center, um, with our new mental health worker in town to, to help. So if that continues to make a positive impact, you'll see these percentages fall as well. So the percentages roughly line up with the percentage of call volume roughly line up with the percentage of population the number of population <coughs> population served. It's a good that. question. Um, you'd have to consider like the population flux, so like for Greensboro during the summer they have a much higher population. Right. But to give you so there's sixteen point seven five percent of our call volume. Craftsbury is twelve point eight eight percent. Standard is 1.75%, Walden is 3.63%, Wilkett's 11%, and Woodbury is 8.88%. So Harvick really does, other than Craftsbury and Greensboro, take the brunt of the, the budget because of the, you're at almost, most your average services. is 342 calls per year just within the town of Harvick and East Harvick every year. As, as of today, we have 811 calls for the whole squad for the year. Yeah, so last year we were right at 800. Um, two years ago we were in the 700. The year before that we were in the 600. So EMS call volume has massively increased. Is that because of the aging population or is the population going up? I don't know that I'm qualified to answer that question. Uh, to be very honest, I, I think we could make some educated guesses, right? That we do have an aging population who's choosing, choosing to age in place. Um, we also have individuals with um, substance use issues, um, mental health issues who are accessing the 911 service more because we are a 911 only service. These are not people who we don't do inter facility transfers, we don't, you know, take grandma from the hospital home. These are people who are calling because they think it's an emergency, and un unfortunately, if they have no other options, 911 will always pick up and we will always go, um, and they know that. So, so we do. We do see kind of both, if that answers your question. There, there was a proposal to have payments for non-transfers. Is that anything you know? Yeah, so if that happens in terms of Medicare and Medicaid does not reimburse us, if we go to, um, like you call 911, we evaluate you, but we don't take you to the hospital, we get no payment for that, which is in large part where the appropriations comes in. You're contracting us to cover your town. Um, and that's about, if I'm remembering correctly, it's about $188, no, yeah, $180 per time we come into the town. Because if you break the entire appropriations by the call number, that would give you your per call rate. So if we saw 
those no transports, which is a significant part, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but it would increase our service income, which would decrease the appropriate, the appropriate need. So that would make a huge impact. I think you can all probably speak to that. We, we do quite a few, you slip, you fall, you need help getting up, we still have to drive 20, 30 minutes to get to you, pick you up off the floor, evaluate you, sign you off, and put you, you know, back in bed and say goodnight. So. Almost seems like you you should get paid more for that if you're providing service at home and not than in bringing someone where they're going to get more more treatments. Well, so I will say this has come up. The insurances will not reimburse for that. So if that changes, that would change things. That is a, a debate within the legislature. It is a debate nationally. Um, we as a service don't feel right to tell someone we're going to charge you 50 or 100 dollars every time you come to your house because we do have those folks that they're at the end of their life the last thing we want to do is penalize them and their families for needing some assistance and that was a decision by the membership on multiple occasions so um, no, but it seems like insurance should pay they should yeah yeah, I, I yeah personally because if you like that. go to the doctors right. they're like no you're fine it's just a virus you're all set and, and yeah, so you still get big bills they still get paid so, so I think if that does change within the next year, you will see the appropriations decrease significantly because we'll be able to recoup that <coughs> service income. But right now, with the call volume is increasing. It's crazy. It's I think the the nine eight eight hotline is going to help. I hope. Yeah. I mean, that's maybe. unfortunately a lot of these things. It, it takes time to trickle down. I, I, right. I agree with Eric about the budget pressures. Right. We kind of have done as good as we can for as long as we can and now we are faced with reality that everything costs more um, so but I, I'm certainly hoping that that does pass thank you for bringing that up um, and then I was excited we'll, to see it yeah, yeah. I am I as well but I, we haven't seen it yet in reality so that would be fantastic but um, I think that extra paid person would help quite a bit in terms of our unless we get home volunteers and happy to have any of you if you'd like to I'm on one call right now um, so thank you yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, thank you for being on the call yeah all right so um so if anybody has any we can sit and crazy ideas think of well we have right we have like we have a couple the more four weeks to come up with to how to how to if if we want to make changes to this and have you know ideas for uh, something oh, I do have sorry before we leave I did have one question um, there's an estimated um, grand list yeah and uh, can you so is that pretty how do I know um, that's always a little bit of a guess but did, did you notice from? I said I added Money. Yeah, yeah I, I talked with Matt and okay. I gotta be kind of conservative. I really hope it's more than that. I'm really, really hoping it's more than that, but that's about all we can do right now. Just, okay. Because we're gonna lose some properties too yep. because of flood, so yep. we have to factor that in. Our grand list has consistently went up. Yep. Um, <clears throat> our fiscal year 26 budget would be a help because by then the reappraisal will be done. So, no, yeah, be done. but all that does is level things. Right. Well, that's mm -hmm. oh, oh, that's right. Oh, that's a pilot. I know. I'm not doing here, so. I guess nothing. So there'll be something. There'll be something. Yeah. Thank you, Casey. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Um. All right. I'm gonna move us. Where are we? Uh, seven, seven. Seven. Yeah. So this is uh, one port. Thank you, everyone, for sitting through that. Um, the item seven is select board to consider approving three cannabis licenses. Got the list for you. Right do here. two. Do the two. They have to be done like they can do it in one motion, but make sure you do indoor cultivator tier one and the names, and you know, do it like it's listed. Do it. Do it right, Eric. So the renewals for consideration are, um, there are two tiers, indoor cultivator tier one, under which there are two businesses. Uh, no, I, they can, uh, just they be can clear all about be what's what. as oh, one, okay. but I just need you to say, yeah. these two are this and this one is this, yeah. Before we get into all that, can I just ask that these, these have already 
have their state. These are renewals. These right. were approved last year, right? So yep. the state sent us notice saying we that they were approved. Now it has to go. That's yes. the question. The state yes. they had their state approval already. Yes. And so the only notice. reason we could deny these is if they're if we thought they violated zoning, which is unlikely because they're renewals. Right. And we would have caught it last time. Sure. Sure. Right. No problems. And no problems. That is so easy. Okay. So I'll just read this. So they're um, up for renewal. Renewal. There are two indoor cultivator tier ones, DB, DCV LLC, doing business as high altitude cannabis alternatives. And the second one is the clean cannabis company. And then we also have one under another tier that manufactures tier three, which is Tilia Processing LLC. Does somebody want to make, make a motion that we uh, approve? Approve the renewals. The renewals for these. Oh. Three. Yep. Uh, cannabis renewals. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Cannabis licenses. What are the carries? Yeah, they are. They're, they are licenses. Yeah. I believe so. It doesn't say that in here, but well, that's what it is. Alright, good job. And next, uh, select board reports. Um, the townhouse is. Uh, went, out to, went out to bid and it uh, ended on the 19th, but we're extending it. And we just got one bidder, and we also had a little bit of technical difficulty. Um, okay, so you're extending to when? Uh, to the 8th of January. Do you have any other uh, potential interest for someone who might submit a bid by extending? <laughs> well, so sometimes the architect is knows like is no, in discussion with other bidders. Not necessarily. Okay. Um, just hoping to hear from. Why? Why do you think? Others. Was there a uh, thought on why you only had one bidder? Was project difficulty or just um, lack of contractors? No, I think uh, there was a second bidder that needed more time or was requesting more time because they weren't hearing back from their subcontractors or something. So there was that and then there was also a little glitch where we didn't have the uh, bids at hardwicktownhouse.org address actually up and running. So it wasn't coming through. So we don't know if maybe we lost any in the virtual world. Hopefully we didn't. Yeah. <coughs> well, it's certainly a little bit of a red flag if the subs won't get you price so yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, they just it said just they need more time. They, mm -hmm. it, 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 so, a lot of so that one might... Kind of, uh, the, the time, the extension time was sort of estimated based on what they thought they could do. So, oh. so you do have another bidder. Who, we hope so. Okay, great. Yeah, that's but good. the, the work that, that we got was very close to the estimate that we had. So, well, you know, we'll see. Rare, it was a little over what we estimated, but your bid's not closed. Yeah, probably not. So I'll shut up about it. Yeah, with who? Quit asking me questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other select board reports? I do. Yes. Ooh. And it's very long, and it's to the community. Um, you may have read in the December 20 issue of the Gazette that a new nonprofit organization, Northeast Kingdom Public Journalism Inc., will take ownership of the Harvard Gazette on July on January 1st, 2024. I sit on the board of the directors of that organization and I'd like to let you know what's going on. One, Ray Small will publish his last issue of the Gazette on December 27th and the Gazette never publishes the first week of January, we don't know what the second week of January will bring. We may try to keep something digital going until we work out a real plan. The board of NEKPJ has no specific plans at the moment, but here's what we're thinking. We will create a community newspaper. Beyond that, we have no firm plans but we will need a lot of people to help us do this. Largely, people to report. Um, if you are a member of an organization, consider finding somebody in your organization who can send us 
news of what you're doing, what you're planning, what's going on everywhere. This is a community paper. If, if you've got a big thing going on in your family, you're having a reunion, there's a 50th wedding anniversary, something like that, send us a write-up, send us pictures, tell us who's in the pictures. This is a community paper that we're trying to build. Secondly, please have patience with our, I'll go back to my script. We need your patience and goodwill. This could be a messy process. We have a very experienced friend who runs a community newspaper for 17 years, holding our hands as a consultant for no pay. But none of us has done anything like this. And we ask for your patience with our screw-ups. They will happen. A minister in Burlington used to end his services with the admonition that parishioners be guided by their faith and not by their fears. Clearly, that's what we're trying to do, and it's a little scary, but it's important that we succeed. Jesse Upson recently wrote, the Harvard Gazette has served our community since 1889, standing as a testament to the enduring importance of local journalism and a free press. This newspaper has been a pivotal part of our community, offering a unique window into the life and times of Hardwick and its surrounding areas for more than 130 years. Please help us keep the Hardwick cassette going. We have a modest amount of startup money, but if you would like to contribute, we are now a nonprofit. If you would like to contribute, write a check to the Hardwick Gazette at and send it to Post Office Box 9, Hardwood, Vermont. 9 is an easy number to remember. Eventually, we'll find a way to have that, have you be able to support us online. But at the moment, we're sticking with snail mail. PO Box 5, or I'm sorry, PO Box 9, Hardwood, Vermont. Second, I will not be running for this seat for select board in March. Back in July, when I made the decision, I thought I wanted to spend my time writing a history of Hardwick. Nobody ever has, and I think I can do it. But the book is not going to get the intention I intended. First, we have to get the, the Gazette back up and running, because without the newspaper, finding a source for the people in the future to know the history of what happened now is very difficult. Um, after the Gazette is secure, I'll really go back to the book. Um, I'll say parting words on my last slide board. We have no promises. We have only faith that we can make something happen. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for taking that on. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't let it fail. You know, it's it's been here. It's, it's been here since 1889, and we can't just walk away from it. That would be great to have it be more vibrant again. Yeah. Yes, it would. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Not uh, easy, though. No. <laughs> Simple, but not easy. Nothing. Things that are worth doing often are not easy. Right. Um, any other reports? New business? I've got a request to hear a cannabis uh, license prior to a state approval. Do you guys have any interest in that? Prior to state approval? Yes. So okay, we, were asked, by, we were asked by their legal counsel if we hear the um, hear an application that doesn't exist because we don't have it. Um, they would give us the application that they submitted to the state, which the state isn't meeting until the end of January. So they're asking if Jesus. to get the local approval prior to the state approval. I don't think that. But we do to do that. Because then, yes. as soon as they have the state, they don't have to then wait and come back to the local level because the local will be done first. That that's their. Well, we don't do anything, but we don't do anything anyway, right? It's no. zoned, and we're yeah. talking about the same old thing, right? Yeah. yeah. So we don't. This one doesn't have a zoning permit. It doesn't need one. Let me just. So what do, what can we say yay or nay on? Well, right, but we 
or can we? But we wouldn't want to prove. I don't think we'd want to prove something without the state having previously I don't approved think it because our, the way. I don't think, we want to get I don't think that's our okay. place. I don't think we have any authority anyway. I'll let them know. I don't either. I mean, there must be a reason. They're asking us to do this. I'm guessing to expedite. The yes, it's like yes, it's strictly for time. <clears> so, from that standpoint, it's unknown ground. I, I don't. I've got the gut feeling that we're going to do nothing, just like we just did a minute. You know, we said yes to something that we can't say no to. It. Right. Right, and that's probably going to happen again. But <coughs> so we can do that. Do that. We, we can tell them we'll be able to do that. We'll be able very to do that. As soon as they can hear from the state, yeah. we will prior, we will fast track it. Right down this table. There we go. Okay. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. that's 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 easy. Easy. It'll yes. be easier if we won't be. Yes. Getting out of whack. Yep. Any other new business? I have something that I think is old business. Um, I was talking to a community member who does watch our meetings on the HCTV and online after, and the comments are that the sound is still difficult sometimes. Especially on here or on the HCTV? On oh. watching it on the HCTV. Afterward, oh, but I, I think it's the same. Yeah, our, yeah. So I don't know how to address that. Well, the patient, this this part is pretty fine. It's on the on Zoom. It's on Zoom. Wow. So this is what my so we at Vassal before I left, we spent lots of money, lots of money, twenty thousand dollars, more than twenty thousand dollars. On a system to improve. And you know what we got? The same thing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's. it's I don't. I don't know how much we want to put into it. We're in a time where if you really, you know, if you really want to participate, you really. Need to talk. I'm just being honest about that. If you're. Yeah. If you're going to be a participant, you need to be in the building. We do our best, but we can't be responsible for you being able to hear every word perfectly because even with the great systems and. I haven't seen one that works well. We can add a couple of microphones. I don't know. Yeah, I, I just don't know. I mean, does, if that's... Well, we have room for more mics. <clears throat> yeah. We asked the people online, could they hear us? And they all said, yes, we could hear them okay. So... I'm yeah, but remember, I, the two times I've... You know, every time I've what been was online... What was it? You couldn't, you couldn't hear us? Well, when, you don't hear... When more than one person is talking, right. it gets really muddy. Uh -huh. Or if it's not someone... Of course, if it's not speaking you know, up or speaking up or it's just all these different variables. That's kind of my point is unless you're studio grade sound, you're gonna get these little imperfections. This is not we have three three different types of microphones. So you're saying that in your experience with investing in a twenty thousand dollar set of set of bad decision. It didn't help. No. Um, so we can do I don't know. Honestly, just, what you know what it is that worked is uh, people understanding, I don't want to say protocol, but speak clearly, speak into the mic, identify okay. yourself, speak one at a time. Okay. You know, all okay. of these things are, are how we corrected the issues that we were having. And okay. I know that um, there's definitely feedback, um, if, even if I move my taper, you know, during the meeting, that stuff, they get that on Zoom. I mean, we so can look at something that maybe come up with something reasonable. I'm not saying we don't, you know what I mean, but let's not get too carried away. Okay. It's really more about the users and how okay. we call them using the technology than it is the technology. I can buy that. That's what we found. Okay. All right. Uh, any other old business? Adjourn. Thank you all. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Yeah, all right.